<laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Yeah, man. Mm. How about the Inspire Choir? Yeah. yeah. We'll get a little more of them later on. A little more, little more Inspire Choir? Yeah, because it's Inspire Choir Sunday. <laughs> exactly. Very good. All right. Simple but not easy. You might have heard that before if you hang around in rooms where people drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing the first four chapters of the textbook, the thing itself, the way it works, what it does, and now we're doing how to use it. And as I was thinking about how to use it, it is very simple to, to, to use it. The thing, that we're, the thing itself is a very simple thing, but the process of using it, not always that easy. And, you know, <laughs> old school science of mine, there was the, like the consciousness police if you've been around the Center for Spiritual Living for a long time, you were like, what, what's in your thought? What are you thinking? Did you bring it on yourself? You know? And I'm really trying to work against the consciousness police. I, I am anti-consciousness police because here's why. You see, we live in this thing called life, this boundaryless thing called life. That's why the globalization of the planet is really a great thing because in reality, it's just the human species, you see? And when we think about how stuff works in the world, uh, like... There's a reason that there's this rubber on this cable because there's RF coming out of it and you want to keep the RF out. Uh-oh. <laughs> and you want to keep it plugged in too. Are you still plugged in? Hello? Hello? <laughs> All of that was to say that the same thing is happening in our brains. We have this electric electricity that's shooting off into dendrites that turns into chemicals and then it turns into electricity again. And it shoots off into the brain and tells the hippocampus or the amalg uh, amygdala or something, whatever to do, you know, and, the, and, then, and then we start doing stuff. But all of that that's happening up in there, all that that's happening up in there is happening with no boundaries. There's no wiring to it, you see? It's like floating out there. That's why you can say, oh, that person has a really cool vibe, you know? Did you catch the wave about that person? You really are catching a wave, and you really are catching the vibe, because what's happening around us is happening with us. It's happening through us, and it's happening by means of us. This thing called life is, is animated within us. There's as much life in you and me as there is in a flea, you see? And all of that life that is taking place is taking place in this, in, in this, in this boundaryless thing called, called, um, called infinity. <laughs> and so when we experience something like cancer or when we experience something like a stroke, it's not your consciousness that made that happen. It's just the fact that that's something that exists in the universe, and we're all interconnected and interrelated, so some of that stuff can happen to you individually because it's happened to all of us collectively. What is done to the, what did Jesus say something about what is done to thee is done to the lesser of thee or something like that? I need to read more Bible. I know all the time I need to say that, and I'm really enjoying studying the Bible, but that one didn't come out right. But the point of it is we are all connected, you see, and so when something happens to somebody here, it's because it's happening in the universe. The reason that we have homelessness is because for some reason on an unconscious level we've agreed that that's an okay thing to do. The reason that we have hunger in the world is that on an unconscious level we have made an agreement that hunger will exist. But it doesn't have to if we all decide and agree that it doesn't exist, you see. And so this process of understanding that this thing that's called life, this thing that is so sincere that works under this system of law that is unconditional, uh, it's, it's, it's a very simple thing. It's, it's uncomplicated. It's not terribly elaborate, you know. It's, it's, it, and it, like I said, it's sincere. Life is very sincere. And it, and, but but the, the process of making it work for us requires some effort. And see, easy means no great effort. Easy means you don't have to do excessive amounts of labor to make something happen. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you're going to practice the science of mind principles in your life, it will require some effort. 
it will require some labor on your part. And though the law is unconditional, though the law is very simple, though life itself is very simple, as I said, it's in a flea, it's in an elephant, it's all, it's all around us, the fact that we want to make it happen, and happen for us, requires some effort on our part. I have been efforting since I came here to do better at remembering names. And what came to me during the gap is that I had not been practicing that enough. And so some of the names of some of you are slipping my mind because I'm not calling you by your name. It requires effort on my part to remember these names on a regular basis, to remember your names on a regular basis. It's just like when I was going to school, you know, I went to Houston Tillotson College and then I transferred to the University of Texas. And when I was growing up in high school and junior high school, I was really good. So I never learned how to study. But when I got to college, oh my God, they had this stuff called studying and I didn't know how to do that. So for some reason, in my mind, I made college hard. I decided that it would be hard. And I got a job in television, and I was so excited about working in TV while I was also going to college. I was working in the TV station, and I th thought that was easy. And because I had decided that it was easy, whoa, did I do well at that. So I don't want you to get wrapped up in like thinking that it's gonna, you know, that, that, it, that it's hard. I just want you to understand that it takes some effort. And when I thought that working at the television station was easy, I gave it a lot of effort, and I did really, really well, you see. I labored at it, and I made it, exce I, ma I excelled at it. So what I'm trying to get to is that, yes, it is very simple. It's not easy, it requires effort, but if you recognize that it is simple and you give it the effort, it shows up kind of easy. Isn't that paradoxical? Isn't that very wonderful though? Ruth B. Smith says, we live in an ocean of spirit. It is differentiated only by the word which is often in terms of limitation. And see, that's what I did to myself. I limited myself in my thought around what it would be like to go to college. But I opened myself up to what it would be like to work in a TV station. I gave my, gave my word limitless boundlessness and infinity when I was around the TV working. But when it came to going to school, I gave it some limitations and I made it hard. And you know what? I had the dean come up to me one day and he said, I need to speak to you. And I said, yes. He says, you know, you have the lowest grade point average of any student still in good scholastic standing at the University of Texas. You have a 1.99999. <laughs> you know why? Because I went to work every day and I didn't go to class. So I thought I'd prove him to be completely wrong, and the next year I just flunked out. <laughs> <laughs> but I was a success in television, and why? Because success comes in cans, and I said, yes, I can do this. So I want you to recognize that this simple thing you can master with a little bit of effort and a little bit of work. But if you believe that the laws of the science of mind don't work, they, they still work. You know this story, right? The law works by proving it not working. If you say it doesn't work, it proves itself by not working for you. And then you go like, it doesn't work. Well, because you thought it doesn't work, because you're working in this terms of limitation. We need to know that our word, our thought, our ideas activate this thing called life, activate this law, and this is how we need to use it. We need to use it with an understanding that we are the ones that are manifesting our life. We're the ones that are making it happen. You know, Thomas Edison, did that thing with the light bulb. And on the, pro you know that, right? And in the process of that, he tried something like 2,000 different filaments to make the light bulb work. And none of them, none of them did work. And his assistant said, oh, all this work is in vain. And Edison's response, because he wasn't living from this limitation, his response was, no, what we really know is that there are 2,000 elements that don't make a very good light bulb. That's all we know. That's all we know. He lived in this place of understanding that if I apply my principles, if I apply this understanding that there's a limitless life, if I use my ideas, I will come up with the right solution at the absolute right time. It worked for him because he believed it would work. I want it to work for you and for us because we believe that it works, because we believe that life can get better. Ernest Holmes says, one of the great difficulties in the new order of thought and so we are likely to indulge in too much theory and too little practice. It's so wonderful to come here every Sunday and 
hear Sherry's great music and our guest artists that come in and Eve Evans when she's here and hear the Inspire Choir and, you know, me and my tangents and my socks and then sometimes with the points that I make and you take some ideas and you think, this is really good stuff. I had a great time today. That's theory. That's wonderful. But what do you do when you leave the door? Do you practice? Are you ever going to get to the Carnegie Hall of Science of Mind? In other words, delivering yourself to the wonderful life that you really deserve, that you were brought here to do and to be a part of. Are you going to find the 2001st filament that makes the light bulb, that turns your light on, that turns your life on? You see, it's great to come here every week, and I hope you will continue to come here every week because I've just grown to love every one of you, and I love doing this together. This is absolutely fun. <laughs> but the flip side of this the flip side is, we're supposed to take this out. That's why we sing, woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on spirit every morning. You should wake up with your mind, stayed on spirit. Walking and talking with my mind, stayed on spirit. You should be walking and talking this in your life. That's the practice. It's not about the theory. The theory is great, but it'll get you nowhere. The practice is what's going to make your life show up and make it improve. And that requires us to be the lion. Courage. It takes courage. <laughs> it does take courage to practice this stuff. Because people will tell you, what do you mean you're in control of your life? You ain't in control of nothing. The only thing you're in control of is what goes in your mouth and what's come out of your mouth. Well, that's part of it. That's part of it. But as I said, we're in this thing all together without any boundaries. So the reason that things are not showing up for us is we have not gotten on the collective consciousness train, the love train, to bring a life for everybody up. You see, in the beginning, Science of Mind was doing really well with the rugged individual, but the reality is we are not individuals. We are individualized, but we are relationals. We really are relationals is what we are. And so if we can really understand that and live from that and put this theory into practice so that we can lift the tide for all humankind, our lives will start to outpicture the way we want to, individually and collectively. This is our work. But you see, it takes tenacity to hold on, you know? To be stubborn about it, to stick to it. It takes commitment. We've got to make a pledge to ourselves and a pledge to these principles and a pledge to life, to live our lives better on a regular basis and not to be satisfied with the status quo. Been there, done that. I'm done with that. That takes dedication. And dedication is to be wholly committed to something, to be wholly devoted to it, fully with every aspect of our being. And then there's this other element, perseverance. Do we have the energy to persevere, to stay the course, to jump and leap the obstacles in our lives? I used to love, you know, I told you about uh, not being very good at the bat and catching thing because that was a left-handed, right-handed deal. Remember the thing about the baseball and all that stuff? I don't know if you were here for that. I'm not going to tell it again. But cause I, uh, I'm working through that. <laughs> <laughs> but one thing I was really good at was running. And I would run and jump. And I love the hurdles. I love the high hurdles. Oh, my goodness. And I was thinking about how, how I much I would get out on the track and just work that and work that and work that until I could just make this one fluid movement. Just, shoo, just oh my goodness, because you don't want your body to really go up and down over them. You just want to stay kind of level and just boom, 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 you know. And I finally got it. It's like when you hit a golf ball and it, boom and it goes right. Those of you that golf, you know, when you hit it and it just like, ooh, that just perfect. Or the baseball and you hit it. There was that moment where you go over the hurdle and you just, the, the, the bar is like right there and your foot just, whew, oh my God. But that took perseverance and commitment and dedication to stay there, to stay that course and to get it right. And that's what we need to do. It's been done by millions of folks and we hear about it all the time. The happiest place on earth is a result of that. Where's the happiest place on earth? Disneyland. Disneyland, right. And you know Walt Disney's story. Right? 
He couldn't even, I mean, he was like trying to get his drawings and, and nobody would take them. And he was finally, he just got so fed up. He kept, he kept going, kept going. And finally, this church publication, this church magazine started taking his, uh, his drawings. And he got enough money from that that he could rent a little studio to begin his work. But it wasn't a very good studio. In fact, the studio was riddled with what? Yes! How about that? Is that crazy? And then there he's like, oh, there's mice everywhere. Whoa, Mickey. Wow. Because he just stuck to it. He just knew that if I keep drawing these drawings, somebody's going to buy them. Somebody bought them. And then he got a place that made him inspired to draw Mickey Mouse. Oh, my goodness. That could happen to you. Maybe not Mickey Mouse, and hopefully it's not mice. But that's what we're here to do. We're here to have that ding light go on that makes our life so incredible. But it takes all these different elements. Gosh, I wish I had known this woman, Peggy Bassett from Huntington Beach. She says, we must have the courage to learn to make choices and decisions that resonate with the divinity within us. That's why we do the gap. That resonate with the divinity within us. That's why I encourage meditation and spiritual practice. Do you know what the divinity within you is calling you to do? Once you get that message, then you know what to do. You start making choices and decisions that resonate with that message that you get from within you, and then you draw your Mickey Mouse. You make your light bulb. You, <laughs> you jump over your hurdle. Whatever it is for your life, you see. That's how this works. See, once you get an understanding of what it is that's resonating within you, life gets easier. It becomes simple and easy instead of simple but not easy. But again, I tell you, it requires practice. That's the number one element, practice. And what is practice? Practice, I looked it up, I love this. Systematic repetition, but it doesn't stop there. The definition of practice does not stop with systematic repetition. It continues, systematic repetition until proficient. Wow, see, if you're just practicing and you're, just, and you're knocking the hurdles down, you have not practiced enough. You got to practice till you can get over the hurdles. You got to practice till your light bulb comes on. You got to practice till you draw your Mickey Mouse. Until you get proficient. You see? It's a process. Think of the stone cutter. Here's the stone cutter. He's got this big old rock in front of him. And he's like. 77. 80. 90. 91. 92. 93. 94. 90, 99. 100. Bing! And it breaks in half. Was it the last one, or was it all 99 strikes that broke the rock in half? It was it's the consistent, proficient, systematic repetition, the practice that makes life work for us. It's a step-by-step -step process, you see. Dr. Holmes was very aware of this. He was very aware of how it all worked. He says it, look at this. The truth, instantaneous. The truth, instantaneous in its demonstration. However, taking only such time in its unfoldment as is inherent in the law of a logical and sequential evolution. And basically what he's saying is, it takes time. You gotta give yourself some time. So since you're practicing anyway, give yourself some time, be, have some faith, and trust that there is this sequential operation taking place that's gonna bring everything for you. So what I'm saying here is, relax. In the end, relax. Take a chill pill. Chillax, as they say. And just know that we know. Know that there is something within us that resonates. Know that we know that, you see. Because the spirit, law, the thing itself, life, desires to create. It just can't help it. If you don't believe me, look at the next time you're sitting in rush hour traffic on the 405, because we don't really get it that bad on the 118. Thank God. But when you're on one of those other freeways where they do get it really, really bad, and you're sitting there, look down in the crack, and what are you going to see? Weeds growing. Life will not be denied. Life wants to create, you see. So we, did, we can just relax, because life wants to not only create, but life has to live by means of each and every one of us. God is like 
really bummed out. If it doesn't have us around, if God could be bummed out, I would imagine that God would be bummed out if we weren't around because God needs something to express, you know? It's, and, and, and we are that, you see. We are that. We are that thing that God lives by means of. So have faith and confidence and trust in that truth. Live with a sense of conviction, a firm belief that we will find our destiny, we'll find our good, we'll find that that resonates within us as we take this theory and put it into practice. And know that we don't have to coerce it. We don't have to force it to happen because it's, des it's its desire to happen. It's life's desire to unfold. It's life's desire for us to feel our good. And it happens in this lovely process of logical and sequential evolution. If you take a rose that's about to open and it's got the sun, it's got all the right nutrients, it's, you've given it all the right feed, you're just waiting for it, you have to wait for it. You can't, you can't go and start peeling those petals apart because that will kill that rose. You see? And, and we're that rose. So we have to allow this logical and sequential evolution to take place. That's why I'm saying just relax and trust and have confidence that your good is unfolding, right? Stick with the drawings. Keep looking for the filaments. Don't worry about the mice. Maybe they're there to inspire you. See, we have to, we have to not try to compel it to happen. We have to allow it to happen. As Emerson said, get our bloated nothingness out of the way of the divine circuit. Dr. Holmes says, we should work not with anxiety, but with expectancy in a state of conscious recognition and receptivity. It's an, I know I started out saying simple but not easy, but I want you to understand then, that's the part of theory without practice. When you put the practice in it, it becomes simple and easy. May your life be simple and easy, and so it is. So now you get the affirmation, let's do it together, here we go. Because I know what I know, and feel what I feel, Changing my thinking and changing my life gets easier every day. Yes. Ah. Get your name on the list. Prayer time. Thank you, D. We had a lovely service on Wednesday where we did a group uh, prayer together and very powerful moment where people called out the name of the person that they wanted to have prayer for. And if you have such in your mind right now, and you know that there's someone who needs your love and support, someone who needs the, the law to work for their good, let's just, let's just call it out right now. We know there are a few prayer treatments in here, and our practitioners have been in the prayer room all throughout the meditation praying for all of these uh, prayers from last week and this week. But right now, if you feel a call to call out a name, I'm here to, to hold that name for you and then to release it into prayer. So let's do it. Join me now. As we feel the divine spirit that lives within us resonate through us and allow that understanding that we are one with everything that is, that we live in a relational universe, in this time and at this moment, we relate to the divine. We relate to that great somethingness that rises up from a great no-thingness to become the everythingness that is. And it is from this truth and this understanding that I know that there is divine right action, perfect outcome, harmonious, loving relationships, perfect and right employment, full health, the elimination of all that is not working, the assimilation at all that does, and a full demonstration of the beauty of life itself unfolding for each and every person that we hold in our hearts and minds at this time. 
I simply know that the march of life cannot be denied. And so at this moment, we remove all that stands in the way, all the limiting thoughts, all the less thans, all this yeah buts, and we rely, we rely on these teachings and this law that simply wants to be expressed as goodness and wholeness. This is the process. This is the truth of our being. This is what I hold for each and every person here, each and every person in our mind, each and every person in our heart, and those that we have not spoken of, of which we have an intention to speak for. So from this truth, I release this prayer with deep gratitude to that law, knowing it is done and complete, and so it is. Thank you. <laughs>